Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I start with the name of Allah. I praise Allah and thank Him for the blessings of Islam. I humbly ask Allah to raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad and his kind Al and companion, and to protect his nation from that which he fears for them. Thereafter, among the great innovations of guidance is the annual celebration of the Prophet's birth, Mawlid al-Nabi. This event is commemorated by Muslims all over the world, who join together for such rewardable deeds as recitings from the Qur'an, chanting Islamic praises, telling the story of the Prophet's birth, teaching religious knowledge, slaughtering animals to uh, feed the poor, and gathering to thank and praise Allah, and ask him to exalt the honor of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The honorable, knowledgeable, and righteous ruler, al muzaffar king of Irbil, initiated this practice about 900 years ago, and he was praised by Muslim scholars, among them the Egyptian Hafiz, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, and Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. The famous scholar of Hadith, Abu al-Khattab ibn Duhya, wrote a book for the king especially to be read during the Mawlid celebration. And there are no great Muslim scholars who displace this innovated celebration. The basis for commemorating honorable events repeatedly every year is evidenced in the Sunnah of the Prophet. As related by Al-Bukhari, when the Prophet immigrated to al Madinah, he found the Jews fasting. So he asked them, why did they fast on the 10th of Muharram? Muharram being the first month of the uh, lunar year. They told the Prophet they do so to commemorate the day that Allah saved Prophet Moses, Musa, and the tribes of Israel from the tyranny of the Pharaoh. It was revealed to the Prophet what the Jews said was true. So Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told them, We are more deserving of Musa than you. He said this because Prophet Musa was a Muslim. Prophet Muhammad ordered the Muslims to fast the 9th and the 10th of Muharram, and this Sunnah is still practiced today. To celebrate the birth of Prophet by doing rewardable deeds that can be done on any day of the year is considered an innovative practice, because this was not done at the time of the Prophet. Although this innovation was praised by the Muslim scholars, some people consider any innovation, an innovation of misguidance. Those who consider any innovation, an innovation of misguidance, have been misled, because there are two Sahih Hadith which support celebrating such an event. Imam Muslim related through the root of Jarir ibn Abdullah that the Prophet said, "Man sanna fil Islam sunnatan hasanatan, falahu ajruha." وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يَنْقُصُ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْءٍ وَمَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً فَعَلَيْهِ وِزْرُهَا وَوِزْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يَنْقُصُ مِنْ أَوْزَارِهِمْ شَيْءٍ Which means, the one who innovates a good innovation in Islam has its reward and a reward similar to those who follow him in it until the day of judgment without lessening their reward, and the one who innovates an innovation of misguidance would be sinful for it, and has sins similar to those who follow him in it until the day of judgment without lessening their sins. There are two types of innovations mentioned in this hadith, the innovations of guidance and the innovations of misguidance. What complies with the Qur'an, the Sunnah and the Ijma' which is the scholarly consensus, and the sayings and practices of the companions is called an innovation of guidance. And what contradicts the Qur'an, the Sunnah, the Ijma' and the sayings and actions of the companions is called an innovation of misguidance. This definition of the two types of innovations was given by many knowledgeable and trustworthy scholars of Islam. Among them, Imam al-Shafi'i wal-Imam al-Nawawi wal-Bayhaqi wa al-Hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Therefore, it is apparent Muslims 
have not gone astray in celebrating the birth of the Prophet, based upon the aforementioned hadith, because the deeds practiced during this event are considered rewardable by the standards of the religion. And, of course, they are in line with the definition of innovations of guidance. Unfortunately, there are some people who misinterpret a sahih hadith related by Abu Dawood, Kullu bid'atin dalala, which means most innovations are innovations of misguidance. Those who are misguided interpret the word kull as every, and thus claim this hadith means every innovation is an innovation of misguidance. Their claim is unfounded for two reasons. Linguistically, this hadith is similar to the hadith related by Al-Bayhaqi, Kullu Aynin Zaniya, which clearly does not mean every eye gazes the look of the adulterer. Rather, most people are guilty of the forbidden look. The person blind since birth would surely not have the forbidden look. And it is known the prophets would never commit such an abject sin. Therefore, the word kul, as used in both hadiths, refers to most. Although it can mean every, it does not mean in this case uh, every, but in some cases it may. As a matter of fact, in the explanation of Sahih Muslim, and now we said, the saying of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kullu bid'atin dalala, is among the terms which are am makhsus, that is to say, a general statement giving a specific meaning which is a known field in Islam, and the meaning of hadith, most innovations are innovations of misguidance, this field, the Aam Mahsus, is seen in Quran, Ayah 3, Surah Al-Kahf, to dammiru kulla shay, which means the wind Allah sent as punishment to the people of Ad demolished most of the things. To accept the meaning, every innovation is an innovation of misguidance, as the meaning of the Sahih Hadith related by Abu Dawood would negate the Sahih Hadith related by Imam Muslim, which specifies two types of innovations, the innovations of guidance and the innovations of misguidance. In the rules of religion, it is not permissible to interpret two Sahih Hadiths in contradiction to one another. Therefore, we know the true meaning. Although most innovations are innovations of misguidance, there are numerous examples of religiously acceptable innovations. During the Khilafah of Umar ibn al-Khattab, Umar initiated the gathering of people in Ramadan to pray the Taraweeh prayer in congregation. When he saw the people performing this prayer in congregation, he said, Ni'mati al-bid'atu hadih, which means, what a good innovation that is. The high status of Umar ibn al-Khattab is known. Thus, it is important to point out Umar used the explicit term al-bid'ah, which is innovation in English. He praised it. If all innovations were a misguidance, as some claim, Umar would not have innovated this practice, nor expressed uh, his praise to it. Yet, both al-Bukhari and Muslim related in this incident, during the era of the followers of the companions of the Prophet, another praiseworthy innovation took place. Initially, letters like the ba, ta, fa, and the ya, which are Arabic um, um, characters, did not have dots above or below them. This practice of distinguishing between the letters by using the notation began after the time of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Since the time of the Prophet, many other innovations have been adopted. Remembering the birth of the Prophet by doing rewardable deeds is a praiseworthy innovation. It is an honorable event and special to Muslims throughout the world. We rejoice in being members of the greatest nation of Islam. The nation of Prophet Muhammad, who was the best prophet and the best creation of Allah. In Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 110, Allah said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Which means, you are the best of nations brought forth to the people, bidding the lawful and forbidding the unlawful and believing in Allah. 
This verse means, This nation is the best of nations by virtue of its prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as explained by the scholars of Islam. Muslims are thankful to Allah for the blessings of Islam and for being among the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Surah Al- Allah said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبِكُمُ اللَّهِ Which means, if you love Allah, then follow the Prophet, and Allah will love you. It is fitting to honor the Prophet. The Mawlid, which is a celebration of his birth, has a great benefit. It inspires the heart to have a more profound love for the Prophet. Finally, I ask Allah to guide us on the straight path and increase our understanding of this great religion of Al-Islam. And Allah knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.